Welcome to this video. Today we are working on day 14 of Advent of Code 2022. And there is a reference to a problem that happened in 2018 that I haven't done. So I won't be helped by this previous challenge. Um, yeah, let's start right away. We have some lines that we need to draw. So that's going to be the first thing we're going to do. We're going to do the parsing, I'm pasting the input inside our local file. I'm using the template that I'm using every day to parse this file. And yep, here we have our lines. And I think today, uh, because we have such big numbers here, it's hard to know how big the map is going to be. So we are not going to use a map today because the map could be super huge. We are going to be using a set, I believe. That should be good enough. Uh, so we're gonna say const map equal new set. And here we return the map. And what do we do with this map? We have this first line, we need to pass that. So let's actually just go through each line of lines. And what do we do here? We're going to split with these characters. Um, const points equal line that split with these characters. So now uh, I can actually console log just to show you where we are. It's always good to make sure we are not too far from uh, something bad. Okay, so here I have an issue. Oh, yeah. yeah. So why is this happening two times? Is because I have this get input here in part two. Uh, so the function was being called twice. Now we have exactly what we want. For each point, we can do uh, mm, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna map here point, and we're gonna do uh, we're gonna return. Oh, how do we do that? Let's just create a const const x y and we read we do point dot split with a comma and then we map this with to be a number. Uh, and here we return x and y and let's see again what's happening. Okay, we have uh, exactly what we want. So what I've done with this string, I'm just splitting with a comma. And then for each value here, I am mapping with an, the number uh, constructor, which is converting a string into a number. So with that, we have uh, the right value inside x and y. And here we create an object with x and y. I am using a lot of ES6 um, uh, thingies. Uh, to yeah, like here we have an array, we spread it into two variables, and here we create a new object with these two variables. Uh, and the key is x, and the value is the value of x, key is y, the value is the value of y. I just need to make careful about x and y. Uh, so x is the first thing, yeah, that's correct, and y is uh, the second thing, so that's correct. So one thing we want to do. Uh, here we need to re not re only return the map, but what we want to do is we want to return the lowest uh, rock. Why is that? The reason is that uh, when a grain of sand is uh, here, when a grain of sand here is dropping and it's going below the last uh, piece of rock, then we know that this is the end of the process that we, the simulation that we need to run. We need to basically here this problem is a simulation. We need to run a simulation. So here I need to check. Uh, let max y equal zero. Here we check if y is 
above max y, then max y equal y. And so here we can return max y. Okay, so that's good. We have a lot of information, but we haven't filled the set at all. So now we need to actually go through each of these points. So for of point of points, what do we need to do now? We need to... Actually, I don't think we're going to do that. What we need to do is we need to draw lines. So we need to say let current point is equal points dot shift, which gives us the first point of the array. And here we can say while points dot length, uh, yeah, I think that looks good. Let target point is equal point dot shift, and now here draw a line between current point and target point and then we can say current point is equal target point um, yep basically we have our point this one we we take this new point and we need to draw a line between those two things. So how do we draw a line between those two? Um, hmm. So first of all, we need to add the current point to uh, this input here, this map, sorry, this map. So we're going to say map that uh, add. Oh, and here we have always the same issue uh, where we have a point that is x and y, two coordinates, and we need to put it in a map that is uh, that can contain a string or an integer. That's always a bit annoying. So here. I'm just going to use a string because the other day I've used uh, an integer and here today we're going to use a string x and y. So basically we are adding this to the map. So we are drawing our rock on the map. Uh, and then what do we do? Oh yeah, I forgot to say. Uh, the map can contain uh, either rocks or pieces of sand. But for us, we don't really care if this is rock or sand. We just care if there is something on this specific place. Because at the end, what we need is the number of pieces of sand. So, um, yeah, like we can count the number of pieces of sand that we add to the map. So, yeah, this is good enough to have just the fact that a square is filled or not filled for our purpose. So we add this, then we need to move to the next point. So we can say while uh, current point dot x is not uh, target point dot x and the same with y. Oh wait, or here we to unless both are true, we need to do that. And what we do here is we say if uh, current point that x is not the same as ah target point that x. We do that, otherwise we do this. So here we need to move current point to be closer to target point. So I'm always, uh, let's say current point x is 1 and target point is 5. We need to do uh, we need to do 5 minus, okay, we need to do current point Const delta 
it's current po uh, no it's target point dot x minus current point dot x and we need to move so basically this this gives us like here what i'm thinking is we have a point and we want to move one step in a specific we need to move one step to our target point so here if we do that we know we can here we have if this is one and this is five with this we have four so we need to divide by four so you would do that and here you know that the delta is one so we are adding one to make current point go closer to target point now let's say we have the opposite five and one if you do target point minus current point you get minus four so you need to divide by four to get uh, five to go towards one you need delta to be minus one so here you need to do math.apps and the idea is that with this we get a value that is either one or minus one that's all we need here we can do current point of x plus equal delta and basically we do the same here for y i don't even need to um, yeah, do any other thing that uh, this yeah i think that's good uh, we could make this code a bit shorter but yeah i think that's good enough so what happens here we go through here this enables us to get two points the start and the end then here until the current point is equal to the end point we add the current point to the map then we make the current point go closer to the target point then we map it and we map it map it map it until both points are the same and in that case the current point is yeah we don't even need to do that uh, we don't need that yeah we don't need that I don't need to comment saying that we don't need that, but we're doing it just for safety. So let's see. Here we are doing this while loop. And so in the end, here we should display the map. Uh, and here we display the map for each line. So let's display just the map in the end. Oh, x is not defined. Of course, x here is not defined because here this is current point dot x and here current point dot y that we care about. Now this is working fine. Uh, so we can check our map here versus uh, this thingy here. So basically we have on line 9. Here we have all the points from 494 to 503 494 to 503 so you see we have an issue here because we're missing some points we are missing some points oh. how come we are missing some points 502 wait 50 oh wait wait so this is not 503 this is 502 that is correct oh yeah i think i i, I know i know here we just we are uh, mapping the point before moving so we need to mark the point after we reached the target point here Yeah, that's one point that I was forgetting to add. With that, it should give us the right data. Here we have nine. On the line nine, we have from five, four, nine, four to five, oh, two, which is exactly four, nine, four to five, oh, two. 
That's correct. Then, um, yeah, 502 it needs to have everything from 9 to 4. So 502, uh, 9 to 4, we're good. Then um, 4, uh, yeah, so this is the 2 that we have here. That's good. Then here we have uh, this line 4, 9, 8. I, I hate like speaking um, numbers. <laughs> I hate that. Four, five, six. Let me pause and check. Okay, I'm done checking this. It's all good. So we can proceed to the next part. And next part is here we have our map and max y. I forgot to check uh, the max y actually map and max y it's nine and yeah that's good because the uh, maximum here is nine so every piece of sand that goes at the, the, that actually is equal to max y we know this is a piece of sand that goes uh, Here it goes, yeah, here this one, which is equal to nine, we know it will go for like forever, it will drop, drop uh, into, how do they say, drop into the abyss, what do they call that? The endless void, so yeah. We have all of the data we need from the parsing, now we can build the simulation. Uh, so let's do that. Let's do that. So we're just going to do a good old while true because uh, we don't really master this condition here. Um, so here, let send blocks. It start at zero. And here we can say, uh, Here we just uh, spawn sand. So the point to create sand looks like this is hard coded to always be 500 and 0. So we're going to check is uh, so let point is equal x 500 y 0 now we need to check we're going to assume assume this point is always empty if this point where we spawn the sand was filled then we couldn't ever have a block of sand that goes into the endless void so we're just assuming that so here we need to uh, drop the sand. So we're going to do another while true, you know what? Uh, maybe it's not a while true, but it's just a loop. We're going to figure out the stop condition later. Uh, so in our case here, we say We just need to say if uh, so we need to check here we check three points if a map has we check if the map doesn't have uh, point dot x and point dot y point dot y plus one so here this is the first 
option which is for a block of sand to drop one uh, step down in that case this is simple we just say uh, point dot y plus plus and that's it otherwise we check if map doesn't have uh, and what's the thing it goes diagonally to the left i think right if there is something one step down then one step down and to the left so here we're really just writing a simulation of the rules that we have in the prime statement and otherwise we check if uh the same thing but to dropping to the right now oops uh, so point at x plus plus and otherwise if all of the three possible options are filled already simple we just have to say this is the place where the grain of sand is going and we say we say map dot add and we add this current point just gonna copy paste that so yeah, in the case we cannot move the point down, down or directly or diagonally, then this is the final point for the point. We add it to the map, and this becomes another piece of rock, kind of, for the later stages. And in that case, we can break out of this loop. And one thing I want to have here is let uh send into endless void basically what we're going to check here we're going to check if point dot y is above or equal uh, max y we can say send into endless void is true which means the piece of send is gonna fall forever so here we can say while there is no the sand isn't into the endless void then we can check those three so here this is uh, direct fall this is here diagonal to the left diagonal fall to the right let me just make sure here to the left yeah and that's it uh, here can't fall further those are like the four possible cases and yeah if it has fallen too far then send into endless void is set to true so here it's the same we need, we can do that like that and here because we are spawning sand, we need to set sand blocks plus plus. And in the end, we need to count these blocks, right? Unit. So here, instead of sand blocks, is uh, sand units. Log the send units. Let's see what happens here. Uh, so I'm, I have too many console logs. Let me get rid of that. We have 25 send units. Oh, of course, we need to have 24, but we have our last piece of send. Here it went into the endless void. So we need here to make sure we remove it. This send unit minus minus uh, because it this piece of sand went into the endless void so here we have 24 looks good let's see the most exciting part of the challenge making sure we have no bugs Ooh, is that correct let's see Ooh, 
that's good. Let's go to part two. I'm gonna read the problem statement first. That's really good. I'm really enjoying this. So basically now we don't have an endless void. We just have an infinite floor at the bottom. Uh, and the bottom is the highest Y coordinate plus one or plus two. Yeah, 2 plus the highest y coordinate. So that's good. We already have the highest y coordinate. I'm really liking that. And here we need to find when we already have unit of stand at rest. Uh, so that, that's what I was talking when I was saying we assume that. Uh, oop, where, 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 where was I? Assume this point is always empty. Here? Part two, this we can't assume that. <laughs> so that's good. We're just gonna copy paste that to part two. Uh, let's see. We're gonna, we're gonna copy the full thing, part one into part two. Uh, one thing I forgot to do, I need to con to undo to keep the small input here. And so now we need to Uh, so here, we have another, another thing, basically, we can't fall further, here we can need to say if point dot y is equal to max y plus one. In that case, this is the, so let, let me show you here, this is max y and plus one, this is where each block of sand need to stop. So when they reach this thing, they need to stop. So that's this thing here, can't fall further. And here we can do else with the previous options. So there's, so here we said, uh, reached the bottom floor. Yeah, looks good. Uh, so otherwise we try to, so if it hasn't reached the bottom floor, we try to make it fall to both directions. If it can't fall, we do this. And here we can remove this condition because it's never gonna happen. There is no sand going into the endless void. Um, so basically it's either gonna break here or here. So here we can say, we can have a while true. Now, here we said we assume this point is always empty. So now we can remove that and we can check uh, const spawn coordinate point point is 500 uh, comma and zero and basically here we check map if map that has uh, spawn point so if there is a block that's already at our spawn point we just have to break outside of this loop so basically now we can remove this, send into endless void because it doesn't fit anymore our problem statement. If there is no, nothing at the spawn point, basically let me, let me actually just do that. It doesn't, uh, it's I'm removing an optimization because it was uh, not useful. Actually you can remove that as well. Uh, if map has this string, then uh, we break, otherwise we add some sand. The sand that reached the bottom floor, we, we stop to move it, uh, we add it to the map, otherwise we try to make it go down. If we can't make it go down, we add it to the map. And that looks like we can display our sand units here. Let's see. 93 sand units. Uh, that's good. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, I forgot to share, I, I don't know if I shared why I am using a map instead of an array. 
because we could use uh, two direction arrays, but I'm afraid this, uh, this map can grow a lot in both sizes. So I'm using uh, this set, assuming that the, the full square won't be filled with uh, everything. So this is gonna, what I would say is a sparse matrix. There is just a few uh, points in the matrix that are filled. So this is why it's good to use a map, uh, not, not a map, a set, instead of using a double, uh, a big array or a double uh, 2D array. So yeah, actually let's just go ahead and try the full input. Oh, this was quite slow, but yeah. We found the thing, let's see. We are good for today. Thank you so much for all the support in this series. If you haven't, drop a like, it helps make the video more visible. If you're not a subscriber already, do click the subscribe button, join us, then see the next videos. And yep, thank you so much for the support. See you in the next one. Bye bye.